Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right now, before you attack, does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Is really Hello everyone, it's DJ with the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and today I want to talk about another deck built around an amazing commander from Kaldheim. Magda Brazen Outlaw is a new legendary creature, and she is an amazing dwarf. One in a red for a 2-1 dwarf berserker. Other dwarves you control get plus one, plus O. Oh. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. Sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact or dragon card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Magda is a powerhouse for using dwarves to power out artifacts or dragons directly from your library. She can be built in a ton of different ways. You could use vehicles to tap dwarves and get treasure. You could... She can tutor up powerful artifacts like stacks or combo pieces. She could do a ton of clever and powerful things. That's not the way I built this deck. I built it full of dumb smashy dragons, even though I'll give a few shout outs to those other strategies. I just love the flavor here. Our dwarves mine treasure, the treasure attracts dragons, and then the dwarves and dragons work together to ride into battle and crush our opponents. Uh, this is a cool synergy between two tribes, and this deck will be a blast to play. So let's look at how this is gonna work. It's gonna start off with our dwarves. Our commander gives us a ton of advantage whenever we have dwarves on the battlefield, and dwarves early on the battlefield. Aggressive dwarves that attack give us mana, ramp us into more things. But we also want to look at the dwarves that can tap by themselves. Axeguard Cavalry, Dwarven Miner, Dwarven Blood Boiler. All of these don't need to attack to tap and create treasure and do other good stuff too. I want to give a quick shout out to that Dwarven Miner destroying all of those non-basic lands your opponents are running in their overpriced decks. Now, speaking of the power of tapping creatures without attacking, we also have some other ways to tap creatures. That'll help Magda and our dwarves mine for treasure faster. Springleaf Drum, Paradise Mantle can help your dwarves ramp. Uh, Cultivator's Caravan is ramp, but you can also tap them to crew the caravan. By the way, you can tap your whole team to crew a single caravan. It's pretty good. Uh, and then also we have Cryptic Gateway, which is just a really fun <laughs> card. It's an artifact that you can search up, but you can just tap two dwarves to put another dwarf in. Or if, you know, you have something going on, you could tap two dragons to put a dragon in. Uh, or if you wanted to, you could have some changelings, some shapeshifters in here so that they can work as dwarves and dragons and synergize with your Cryptic Gateway. Of course, dwarves are not the only things that create treasure. Brass's Bounty, Treasure Map, and Trove of Temptation. These are a few other helper spells that make treasures that can ramp us into dragons faster. Treasure Map will generate three treasures, but more importantly, it'll flip into Treasure Cove, giving us card draw for all the treasure that we create, and this deck creates a ton of treasure. Trove of Temptation will give us a treasure each turn, but at the cost of making our opponents attack us. They might just attack into a dragon. Who knows? It's a little bit of a scary card that's definitely fun to play. Next, we have an optional include. We have Dockside Extortionist because uh, it's it's genuinely good. It's just like an amazing card. The problem is, is that it's just so expensive. You have a deck that can come out and be extremely budget friendly. And then you have this $40 goblin and, and I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like it matches. But if you have one, throw it in this deck. It'll make a ton of treasure and be really good. Uh, if you don't have one, don't worry about it because this deck is fun and easy on your wallet. So which dragons are we going to recruit with Magda? That really depends on the situation. Being able to tutor dragons directly into play at instant speed is very powerful. Are we ready for a big alpha strike? Do we want to make our creatures deadly blockers? Do we want to have some sort of combo enabler? There's tons of different dragons that we can choose from. Terror of Mount Velus 
gives all of our creatures double strike. And that could be really great as we're attacking in with our dwarves. It might look like we're just trying to generate some treasure, but then slam a terror into the battlefield and suddenly your dwarves are dealing tons and tons of damage. Dracuseth is a good big beater that can block well, but also attack and clear the way for more dwarves to create more treasure. And Null Spine Dragon has the utility of being able to just draw a fresh hand. Now, I mentioned budget before. Those three are really strong budget contenders. But of course, there are lots of dragons out there. You can pick and choose whichever ones you love. The problem is that some of them are loved by a lot of people and kind of expensive. Uh, all the ones that I'm mentioning on this next part are over $10, which is a little bit sad, but they are super fun. Uh, Terror of the Peaks. You can put this into play and then you can cheat more dragons into play and deal a ton of damage. Hellkite Tyrant can come out of nowhere, stealing a ton of different artifacts. And remember, you are creating a bajillion treasure tokens, so Hellkite Tyrant might just win you the game with its other ability. And then Skyline Despot gives you card draw, you look for that in red, and then also gives you more dragons. Goldspan Dragon is brand new, kind of expensive, but synergizes really well with treasure, helping you create even more of it and using it to ramp things out better. And Scourge of the Throne works really well if you're in a deck that's attacking. Like for example, you put Scourge of the Throne into play and you get an extra combat, and then your dwarves can create more treasure to get more dragons onto the battlefield. But remember, you don't have to spend a lot of money to have dragons be impactful. Rapacious Dragon gets you to casting more dragons. Hellkite Igniter can be that big punch. It can deal more damage than a lot of these other dragons put together because you have this backlog of treasure that you can pump into Hellkite Igniter. Remember, you can activate this ability more than once, pumping its power to insane abilities. And let's talk about removal. Steel Hellkite has the amazing activated ability of destroying non-land permanents with converted mana cost X. It's just so great at answering weird things that Red has a hard time dealing with it. Your Hellkite Tyrant can come in there and just smash and destroy exactly what you need with pinpoint precision. <sighs> I don't know why I'm even bringing this up, but technically you don't need to play dragons. Magda can search up artifacts, and that's kind of cool too, because dwarves, they just mine treasure and they create artifacts. It's kind of a thing that they do, and so the fact that they can search up these big, ancient, complicated artifacts is really cool. I like Possessed Portal. It's eight mana, difficult to cheat on to play, uh, but let's read it because you might not be familiar with it. If a player would draw a card, that player skips that draw instead. At the end of each turn, each player sacrifices a permanent unless he or she discards a card from his or her hand. So it shuts down card draw like crazy, which we don't care about that much in red. If you have any sort of board presence, you don't care about sacrificing permanents because you're creating treasure tokens all the time. And so you can get this going where your card draw is tutoring artifacts into play or dragons into play, and you're never actually sacrificing anything important because you have excess treasure to do that. Just an insane stra stacks strategy. Another big thing to cheat into play is Blightsteel Colossus. Just infects someone out of nowhere. Difficult to interact with. And then we have Nullstone Gargoyle, a nine mana, four or five flying gargoyle. But this shuts down so many different decks because whenever the first non-creature spell each turn is played, counter that spell. This just shuts down so much of what your opponents can do. A lot of times they just burn a spell, get it countered so they can finally do something on their turn. It's a really good lock piece. You can also be a little bit more aggressive, have a toolbox that lets you deal tons of damage. For example, let's say that you're attacking with five dwarves. You can at instant speed sacrifice those treasures to put an Eldrazi monument in play, to put a coat of arms into play and suddenly all of those dwarves are getting pumped up huge. Or you make big attacks all over the place, you sacrifice some stuff and put a Throne of the God Pharaoh onto the battlefield, dealing even more damage. I also like the utility that comes with so many treasures on the battlefield. You can weaponize them with Gurper Ether Grid. You can actually tap them to cast things like your big dragons with Inspiring Statuary, or you could turn them into more dwarves, maybe even more dragons or Blightsteel with Indomitable Creativity. 
All right, let's take a look at this deck list and find out how this deck plays. Well, it has quite a bit of artifact ramps that we can get going, but when your commander costs only two, Magda can get down early and have a big impact. We also have a lot of dwarves that can come down pretty early too. One, two, three, four. Dwarves are not the most beefy creatures. In this deck specifically, we have a lot of dwarves that tap. So it doesn't matter if you draw your one, one dwarf in the late game because it has a relevant ability. This one destroys target non-basic land, like really good ability. And it's gonna create a treasure for you if Magda's on the battlefield. You know, even some of the, the dinky ones, some of the classic ones like Dwarven Warriors, it's like, oh my gosh, are we really gonna play Dwarven Warriors? But this is a better mana dork in red because it's three mana, it taps with Magda out to create a treasure. It also has the added ability of, you know, making something unblockable so you could it's so funny too because magda pumps the dwarves so like you're very rarely able to have target creature with power two or less become unblockable but uh you can always target itself so that um or magda too so you could just get some damage in but the thing is that these are like mana dorks that you have in here and then of course we have this ability to grind with all of these tap abilities and to create a ton of artifacts. And then how we use those artifacts is different for every deck. In this deck, we've gone big old dragons, Hellkite Charger and Hellkite Tyrant, Hellkite Igniter, you know, Lathless and Nullspine and Rapacious and Leyline and Valkus and Scourge and Skyline Despot. It's just all over the place. Just so many dragons. And the thing is that you don't need your commander to be able to go crazy with dragons. Like, you can just cast them. I know. Crazy, right? <laughs> we have a lot, few ways to cheat things into play, like Indomitable Creativity or uh, Mana Geyser to be able to cast things. Uh, we have some card draw attached to Treasure Makers. Love the inclusion of these super well. And then we also have a little bit of reach with Gerper Ether Grid, be able to attack on a different axis. And that is the deck. Now remember, you can take this deck and make it your own. Now, even with all of these $10 dragons that I have in this deck, because I do, I have Gold Spine Dragon and, you know, Skyline Despot and stuff like that, uh, this is still coming out at just under $200. You can make this deck for about $100 if you cut back on all these crazy expensive dragons and this Dockside Extortionist I have in here. <laughs> just get rid of this $46 card and you've instantly cut the budget by, by crazy, okay? Um, but you can also take it in different directions, take it aggro grow artifacts, go big artifacts, go stacks and taxation. It's up to you to make this deck how you want to. And I think that you're going to have a great time with Magda. Thank you so much for watching this video. I also want to thank Dragon Shield Sleeves. They sponsor the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel and they have sleeves inspired by Kaldheim and they are awesome. One great place to get them is my other sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc. They have great prices on these sleeves. They'll be released January 29th. That's in just a few days. You can buy these sleeves and they're great Dragon Shield quality too. And if you want to save 5% on your orders at Cool Stuff Inc., then use the coupon code JUMBO5. I also want to thank my patrons. They're great. They're amazing. I love them. And I want to thank you for watching this video, for pressing the like button, for leaving a comment, for subscribing, for doing things that support this channel. Thank you. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.